Hey guys, welcome back. This has been such an amazing series. If you missed last week, you better go back and check it out. It's pretty amazing. Um, and I'm learning, I'm learning that you guys like my stories now. So I'll have to incorporate stories more into this podcast. But this, we are on week four, which is going to be the final week of our how not to end like end with a bang. And we're talking about relationships, whether it's one on one, whether it's with a group. And we talked about different kinds of relationships. And so last week, we really focused on how to say goodbye well. And that, that was pretty impactful. Um, is that even, even more impactful for myself? Because, you know, I don't have all the scripted <laughs> before I come on here. I just kind of let God move. And I'm aware of a little bit where I want to get to, but I just kind of let God do his thing. I don't re record, you know, whatever comes out happens. And I think that shows my imperfection, <laughs> but also I think it shows how God can really move through people. And so last week was really fun. And I realized I was moved as well uh, by retelling and re inviting you guys into that story. So if you haven't checked out last week, please do. This week, it's all about ending well, but also moving on, which is something we don't talk about. You know, even when a relationship ends, whether it's a counseling, coaching relationship, or a group relationship, we all have to move on. And we don't really talk about it. We just expect people to like do it because the other person, the group, whatever is not involved. But yet we are because we bring, we bring what happens in the goodbye and the farewell and the breakup, even in romantic relationships into our next connection into our next community, into our next relationship. And so I want to focus today just on moving on. I'm going to talk about what happens one-on-one. -on -one. I'm also going to talk about what can happen in group and just some final last words <laughs> that I would say to encourage all of us in this process. And so for the one-on-one -on -one relationship, this is the part where both have moved on, whether it's a counselor, whether it's a coach, they're in these relationships, either the clients moved on, the coaches moved on, they've moved on to other relationships. And one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen happen, and I touched on this at one of the times that I talked to you guys about this, is that they don't have another place to land. Meaning that client, as a coach, as a counselor, you have somewhat of a responsibility to make sure that coach or make sure that client gets what they need. Now, granted, we can't give them the world but we can give them at least options of who else to connect with. We can give them at least resources. And for me personally, because I don't work with 500,000 people, you know, I'm very selective on who I work with, especially, especially in the one-on-one -on -one relationship, I make sure, especially if it's me that's leaving and referring them to somebody else, I make sure that they at least get connected. I make sure that that person that I'm connecting them with, there's a relationship there. Very rarely do I actually make a referral to somebody that I don't know. And even if I do, I'm like, hey, I really don't know this person. But I've heard from this person that I really trust that this person has the expertise, has the know-how, has the relationship, has the connection that you could really benefit from. And I know enough of that person's story. Again, I've helped that happen. It could be as simple as a three person email where you're introducing them to one another and you let the counselor or the, let the other coach take it from there. I've also shared an experience and it will forever still be in my memory is about I had one client that really asked me to come with them to introduce them to another counselor. And so I did. And I knew this other counselor. We were really good friends. And so we sat together and we brought a lot of emotions into the room. Um, I was there when she got to share some of her story and, you know, they asked me, would you, you know, a little bit of processing questions as well. And it was really neat because it was almost like a pass off. Like I've never been a part of anything like that. That's not normal. <laughs> and I normally would say no, but this is a totally different situation. What I see happen most times than not, especially when it's the counselor or the coach moving and physically moving or ending their business or what have you. I've seen this happen where I've the worst one that I've ever seen is no acknowledgement, just leaving. And that was, oh my goodness, when I've worked with clients like that, that have had that happen, that's so hard. <laughs> and so we really do have to 
you know, ease our way into this really hard Dubai conversation in the weeks leading up to that. That's difficult, but also it's been really challenging when it's just a session or it's just the end of a session where they're like, hey, I'm sorry, this could be our last session together. What? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, why would you wait until the very end? Because I know as counselors and coaches, we struggle when a client waits until the very last minute, the very fast five minutes of their session. And it's like they end up telling you this bomb that went off right in their life. And it's because they were afraid to really get into it. So with that being said, as a counselor, as a coach, if we're the one leaving, we need to begin the conversation with that. We need to let the client know right up front, this is what's happening. We need to welcome the emotions into the room. We need to, yes, it can still, that session can still very much be about the client and they can wrestle with that as much as they need to, or they can, you know, move on to another issue. But our deal is whether that's an additional time, and I've done that before, whether that's an additional time onto the end of the session to really process that together, make sure that they can get that referral that they need, or regardless if that puts in, I mean, sometimes that may have an influence on the current session. That responsibility is on you. Now, here's the deal. If they do not want a referral, if they are struggling to really cope with this, you can try. You can try to make that referral. You can try to process that all, but you do have a beginning and an end time of your departure, correct? And so in ending well, we talked about last week of how it's an influential relationship. And so that's definitely with the one-on-one -on -one to spend some time honoring that. Really important in the group. And so I'm going to say switch over to the group now, how to move on, how to really put the closure on, how to move on. The group specifically, if it's one person leaving, if the entire group is ending, it's a lot easier <laughs> to take the next step because you know that that group doesn't have to meet again without that person present. But when one person leaves or two people leave, and the group decides to continue and stay intact, that brings a whole nother dynamic. And so I've seen two issues happen in this. One, I've seen the person that leaves and they go, oh, well, you can still be part of the group. You can still come. You can still be involved. You know, I know you're only going to be here once a year. Definitely come be part of the group then. No, I mean that in a nice way. Because here's what happens. Your group is going to change. Yes. You can always reconnect with that group, maybe at a restaurant, maybe outside of that group time. But that specific group time, the reason you're meeting, if it's really deep heart work that you're working on, that person has moved on. Let them move on. But then when you reconnect, yeah, you can reconnect around that. But you don't reconnect in that group setting. It is not an open invitation to come back anytime. Some groups that can work for, but if you're doing really deep heart work and transformational work, you owe it to that person, you owe it to the group to let them go. Second thing is that when the group is meeting, that very first meeting without that other person, and especially if you've been with that other person for a while, you're gonna feel a void. You're gonna see that empty seat you're gonna if you don't physically see it you're gonna feel it i want to give permission as a facilitator to bring those emotions into the room to maybe do a gentle check-in with my group and say wow sandy's not here i know this is going to feel different can we just call out what emotions are coming to mind right now how are we feeling and let them, and it could be that some people in that group aren't feeling anything. That's an awareness too. Just allow that to come into the room. Allow that awareness to come to the room. Again, you're not fixing. You're just bringing that awareness. Because here's the thing. You can't do anything with something that's not invited into the room. You can't. <laughs> so when you invite that emotion into the room, you invite that reality into the room, then it's there. Then we're like, okay. Now the whole picture is here. And then you decide how to move forward from there as a group. Don't 
just continue as is because you can't, regardless if it's one person that's been there for a couple weeks or one person that's been there for years. You can't just move on. You need to take a minute and just at least acknowledge the change that's happening amongst the group. If there's anything that you need to wrap up from last week, do that. Take the time and do that. I know the temptation is to move on, but I promise you, if you take the time and really wrestle through that as a group, it will bring you closer as long as you handle it well and as long as you invite others to be in curiosity with you. So those are the two main things that I see that happen and both in the group and both in the one-on-one that I wanted to cover because it really does influence how you move forward. And it really does have a direct impact on both sides of the relationship of how you move forward. So again, I hope this series has been helpful for you. I hope you were able to bring back up a moment that maybe you didn't want to bring up. And I get it. Some goodbyes and some ruptures are just hard because it wasn't handled the right way. But you may not have gone back and really thought, why was it not handled the right way? Where was my part in this? What can I learn from this? What can I take from this experience? And again, there should be no shame or guilt or anything with all this. We're simply allowing ourselves to get curious about a past situation and going, okay, so I did not facilitate that group well, or I did not end that group well, or man, I did not end that friendship well. I did not end that relationship with with a client. Okay, let's take what we can from those experiences and let's move forward. Let's move forward from those. You can't learn from something you haven't reflected on. You can't experience something that you haven't taken time to reflect on. You can't offer other people to experience the greatness <laughs> and the amazement of being in close community until you really practice that yourself. And that includes these rupture moments. And it really is an invitation, really is an invitation for closer community. I hope this series has been helpful for you. As you can see, my, my background, we are in summer mode and I'm just excited. So during the summer, it's going to be a surprise what I do for the next series. And again, I really welcome your questions and your comments. I would love to feature that on a future podcast episode. And so if you have some curious questions that you would love to just bring into this podcast, I would love for you to email me at bethany at stepoutandthrive.com or you can message me on any of the social media platforms and would love to feature you here on this podcast. Have a great summer, you all. I hope you continue listening. We'll be back here next week. And as always, dare to do more than just survive. Step out, move on, (laughs) and thrive. Have a great week, guys. Bye.